from the festival floor. We are at the nation's largest celebration of STEM, and we're wrapping up our Sneak Peek Friday, and we have a special visitor here, former astronaut Tony Antonelli is with us today. Thank you for coming by, Tony. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, we are grateful to have you here at the Expo. Now tell me, what has your role been here at the festival? Uh, so I uh, left NASA a couple years ago. I work at Lockheed Martin, and I run a group called uh, Advanced Programs, and uh, we look at all of the future things that we'll need for both human spaceflight and robotics science, uh, exploration and, and uh, Earth's next generation of weather satellites. Uh, so really exciting job. And then today was even more exciting than that. We have uh, at Lockheed Martin a STEM initiative, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, where uh, just like a lot of places in the country trying to keep kids interested in, in uh, STEM, uh, we ran, ours is called Generation Beyond, we ran a video challenge and asked uh, middle schoolers to design a habitat for use at Mars. Turns out my team is actually doing that today for NASA um, as wow. part of a study contract. So I'm collecting all these great ideas for <laughs> middle schoolers. From the but next anyway, generation, yes. This morning we announced both our uh, first place individual winner and our first place uh, team winner. Wow, and what did they receive? Uh, so uh, three things. First, uh, we started off with uh, what I'll call the grand prize. Uh, check for $10,000. Wow. <laughs> um, and then tomorrow, uh, they will be at the Air and Space Museum. And uh, they get a behind the scenes tour of the Air and Space Museum, which I think is kind of cool. But then they're on stage presenting their habitats to the folks visiting the museum. Wow. I thought that was really cool. Uh, except some of their habitat design are so clever. I want to use them in our competition, so I'm a little worried that our competition will hear about their great ideas. Uh -oh. And then uh, <laughs> the third part of their prize is a two-day trip, all-access tour of the Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. And I was telling them, I previously got an a all-access tour of the Kennedy Space Center, and at the end of it, they launched me into outer space. So <laughs> Want them to be ready. <laughs> that is a dream come true. I, yeah, I, I can only imagine how excited they really are. Wow. So let's talk, a, you know, a couple of questions that I'm sure you get a, a lot being a former astronaut uh, and your experience <laughs> in space. But, you know, how did you feel before your first takeoff into space? Uh, so um, I've read uh, some of the books by the formers uh, and, and collected a different uh, set of experiences. The, my first flight got delayed uh, quite a bit while we were still in Houston and then a little bit more when we were in Florida. Um, so we sort of had a couple of mornings where we got up and, and thought we were going to space before we actually did it. Um, it's, uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, didn't have any problems sleeping. Um, I was excited about the fact that uh, I'd been looking forward to this for a while and now it was finally that day. Now, have you always wanted to be an astronaut, starting when you were a kid? Yeah, from when I was a kid, where you can only see part of the whole picture, uh, and kind of a dream on and off. Uh, and then I ended up uh, joining the Navy to pay for college, mm -hmm. and uh, started flying airplanes for the Navy. And once you get to that point, you can kind of see, uh, see a path to actually compete. Uh, and once you finally made it into space, how long were you out there? Uh, so I, I got to fly two space shuttle missions. Uh, they were each uh, a little less than two weeks. Um, so just a, just a blur, a blink. That's more than <laughs> enough time. Boy, I can't wait till there are commercial flights to space. I want to be one of the first, for sure, to be out there. It is, uh, uh, it's worth it. So, uh, so hang in there. Okay. Uh, and uh, I say I've flown in space just twice. And a lot of people say, why do you, why do you say just? I'm like, because... I'm hoping for I'm hoping for another. I mean, just twice so far. So far, still got more time, of course. <laughs> and then, how does it feel to you know experience zero gravity? That's usually another question that I I'm sure people ask as well. Yeah, so um, that's a tough one to uh, explain with enough fidelity to really convey the feeling. So I tell folks the the two best parts about being in low Earth orbit. Um, the first one is looking down at Earth day or night. Earth is beautiful. beautiful. Um, I think most folks can understand that because they've seen pictures of places and then they've been there and it's like so much more amazing to go there and see it for yourself versus even a terrific photograph. Um, the 
just being able to float around and fly um, is ridiculously fun. And I don't know exactly why or don't have anything to compare it to. The closest thing I got is, uh, so I've, I never had a superpower. Uh, for a couple of weeks, I could fly. And it was, there you have it. It was really cool having a superpower. Uh, and as soon as I got back to Earth, it's it gone. gone. And I, I have no superpower today. Um, <laughs> so the, being able to float and fly around is, uh, is ridiculously fun. It must be liberating. It's, yes. Yeah. Uh, it makes some of your work more difficult because you have to keep track of everything, mm -hmm. uh, but overall it's really fun. But today, uh, while we continue to fly, we, NASA, the International Space Station, and trips to low Earth orbit uh, right now on Russian Soyuz and soon on commercial crew vehicles. NASA, uh, and we're uh, NASA's industry partner building the Orion spacecraft. So we have not sent humans outside of low Earth orbit, think two, 300 miles up, uh, since 1972. 1972? Is the last time we left low Earth orbit. So now Orion's wow. being built and designed. Exploration Mission 1 will be the next test flight of Orion. Uh, she's at Kennedy right now getting built, got powered on uh, this summer. It's getting tested out, ready for a test flight. She will go out past the moon farther as a human rated spacecraft than we've ever sent anyone before. And then wow. the very next test flight, we're putting crew on there, and they're going to get to see the moon up close. Oh, my goodness. So. And when is that slated to happen? I mean, obviously, we know there could be other factors, but... Yeah, so we still, we still got some hard work in front of us. Right now, Exploration Mission 1, kind of end of 19 or 2020, and then Exploration Mission 2, kind of 22 or 23. And, right, and uh, that's when humans will be on board yes. that mission. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> excellent, excellent. What's been the most fun part of the expo for you today? So uh, the most fun part of the expo uh, is um, what Lockheed Martin's doing with STEM. So of course, uh, like I don't think it might have been off camera. So handing out giant checks valued at ten thousand uh, dollars, it was a first for me. It was it was super thrilling. I believe the student. I might have been more excited about handing them out than they were about <laughs> receiving them. Um, but I believe. Uh, my personal interest, keeping kids encouraged in science and technology for a little bit longer, happens to align with Lockheed Martin's interest. So I'm pretty lucky in that regard. My, my personal interests align with the companies. Uh, in 2017, Lockheed Martin spent $12 million investing in STEM-related initiatives. And as a, an employee base, we've volunteered over 100,000 hours. 100,000 um, hours. A volunteer yeah. work associated with STEM. Uh, so I'm really excited and, and proud of Lockheed Martin. Our uh, current uh, effort is called Generation Beyond. So uh, it's online at LockheedMartin.com slash Generation Beyond. Is there another round? There will be another round. It's in development right now. Um, I, I just heard this morning uh, some of what the focus was going to be, but I'm not sure it's public yet, so I don't want to get in trouble. But the current information that's there is uh, a curriculum for students and teachers uh, to do, uh, based around Mars exploration. Uh, there's family activities, things you can think do around the dinner table with, uh, with the family. And then there's also an app where you can actually check the weather on Mars right now. So in Washington, <laughs> D.C., it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Uh, of course, Mars, it all starts with a spacesuit, but then is it a spacesuit and a big parka or a <laughs> spacesuit space and, and a, a little light sweater cardigan? <laughs> Um, so the, the idea for uh, Lockheed Martin, a lot of our uh, products depend on, you know, high technology kind of inputs uh, today, and the same is going to be true in the future. We have evaluated just at Lockheed Martin alone over the next 15 years, we will need 100,000 new employees in science and engineering. Um, so it's time to start uh, making sure the middle school kids are, uh, are, are really interested this. and excited about it. That's a huge investment of time, energy, and of course resources to make sure that these young people are ready. And the opportunity that, I mean, 100,000 <laughs> jobs, that's great. You cannot complain. These middle schoolers, you know, you just be ready. You just be ready. You will have a job if you put your mind to it and put and, in the work. And we work on the funnest stuff, so. Uh, uh, yeah, I would think so. <laughs> if I was in middle school, I'd definitely be heading over to Lockheed Martin. Well, thank you so much for your time and for being here and being present with us. Again, it's SciFest weekend, everybody, presented by Lockheed 
Lockheed Martin, and we're so grateful for their support over the years and hope to continue, hopefully in the long run. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a great time this weekend. I know you will. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you.